Buongiorno, buonasera, benvenuti amici, welcome my friends and welcome to my channel. In this, the last episode of a series of five where Fountain Pen Therapy is awarding its annual pen awards, we'll be looking at the category of the best eyedropper. And the nominees are... Okay, we're back. So we will be looking at, in effect, 12 nominees for this category being the best eyedropper. And um, you'll see that my choices may be somewhat controversial because one can get into the, you know, what is the definition of an eyedropper. And as we go through uh, my, my uh, nominations, uh, we can perhaps look at that and, uh, and discuss it more 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 specifically now so number 10 on my list is this pen take a look at this the resin is just exquisite in my opinion the um, the clip is also very unique and it's the pen uh, pen bbs nagano 487 magnet and i'll explain what magnet why magnet um i think it's a i think it's a nice pen I think I paid this thing like forty, forty-five dollars Canadian uh, at the time. Uh, pen BBS came out with a series of pens uh, several years ago, uh, one after the other. It it caused a real stir in the pen community. I can tell you, because of their price points and because of their uh, very, very unique and um, quite varied uh, resin they used and they use all kinds of different filling mechanisms and we'll take a look at my filling mechanism awards and i think they they are they are featured uh, quite extensively in those awards so this is my pen bbs nagano 487 nagano is the 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 resin style they're a limited edition uh, for this particular uh, resin style uh, look at these nibs there are they have their own nibs um, nice nice embossing uh, most of them are uh, fine, extra fine. They do have a medium, but that's as far as they go in terms of larger sizes. What is unique about this one, and we will get to see this mechanism a little bit more closely in my uh, in my um, filling mechanism award. But it's it's an actual magnet. You see, there's a magnet there, and the magnet um, draws up and down the piston. So um, at the not the easiest it needs to be lubricated often but talk about a unique filling mechanism well that's one of them uh, so and, and that gets me to discuss well if there's a filling mechanism is it truly uh, and really an eyedropper you know one would think the i guess the classic definition of an eyedropper is where you just open the casing and you uh, draw ink with a syringe or with a uh, you know, some some tool, draw the ink, and then just a dripper, if you will, and you can drip or, or syringe the the ink into the into the barrel, and then close it down, um, shutting it down, uh, uh, and there you have it. Whereas there are pens that have filling mechanisms which are not converters. In my opinion, an eyedropper is anything where the ink goes into the barrel, whether it's drawn in by a filling mechanism um, so long as it's it's the barrel itself that holds that ink i i consider it an eyedropper because the connection it needs to be properly sealed in order for the ink to be able to uh, to uh, um, to stay there and not leak all over the place uh, and there is no converter or there is it's not a cartridge so that's my definition of an eyedropper so that's number that's my number 10 on my list. The next one on my list is another pen BBS. This is the Cardorite. Uh, just take a look at the, the resin on this pen. This is a true eyedropper, as you can see. There's no drawing mechanism whatsoever. The barrel is, is absolutely empty. There's nothing in it, so you need to open it up. And this gives me a chance to discuss the pen BBS seals and the, you know, the round plastic seals they have you can actually get um, um, you know order them and um, get spares as you can see the sealing here is really really nice so if you add some lubrication at the same time uh, the 
the barrel is well made, very well constructed pens. And you know, I think I bought this for like $15, if you will. Um, and you can tell that it's really tight there. There's no leaking. Nice nib. It's a nice uh, pen BBS nib. This is Carderite. So it's the pen BS Carderite. Next on my list, and I think uh, here again, there's a drawing mechanism. Is this an eyedropper or not? Some people would say not. I'm going to consider it as an eyedropper. It's my Twisby. This is a classic design, very unique. Uh, and it's the Diamond 580. I've got, got them in almost all the colors, the pink, the blue, the greenish, the purple, etc., etc. This one's the orange model. Very nice Twisby nib. This is a stub, so I'm happy. It's a number five nib. The size nib is not a number six. Very, very functional pen. Uh, you can, you know, break this open and um, wash it really nicely. It's got a nice drawing system. Uh, so that definitely makes my list. Some people would say it's not an eyedropper. I believe it is. There you go. Next one is a true eyedropper in the true sense of the term, if you will. And this is my Ranga. This is a Ranga PSP Monterey. So it's a special edition made for Peyton Street pens. Um, the reason I chose this pen uh, for two reasons. One, one, it's probably one of my best sealed uh, uh, eyedroppers, and I'll explain that in a second, but take a look at that resin. Isn't that nice? I mean, the chateauancy on this resin is just exquisite. It is a little bit on the smallish side. That's just the Monterey um, uh, model, but you can, you know, there has a screwing mechanism so that you you can post it, and once you post it, uh, I mean, it it become it gives you that size and weight that some of us enjoy. So that's my Monterey, very well manufactured. All the Ranga pens are, and I think I'm going to have a, a special series just on all my Ranga pens. This is a true eyedropper. I think you can open it up. It has uh, no uh, cartridge. I think you have a choice. You can use a cartridge. You see, I have a cartridge there, or you can use it without a cartridge. So right now it has a cartridge in it, but it is an eyedropper. And the um, they do come with very nice uh, nice uh, choice of, of nibs. Uh, in this particular pen, I put my Edison 1.5 in this one, a nice, very smooth nib. So this is a go-to pen for me. Blue with blue ink, light blue ink. There you go. Okay, very nice. Ranga. Next on my list is this Fanmu Green White Swirl, if you will. The reason why this made the list is just take a look at that resin swirl. At the present time, you can see there's a there's a converter in there. And again, it's one of those pens that can be used either as an eyedropper or with a converter. Uh, and again, when you remove that converter, it becomes a true eyedropper. There is no filling mechanism. You've got to draw or uh, draw ink from a bottle into that barrel. Uh, very nice. I, I just think that that resin, special effects to give it that swirl, uh, makes this pen uh, one of my favorite eyedroppers. And it's got this little mechanism here so that it doesn't roll on your desk. Okay. Anyway, that's the fan move. Next on my list is this Magna Carta, the uh, Magna Carta Emotion series. And this is a really, really nice sized pen. I mean, very hefty, not heavy because of the resin. It is a true eyedropper, if you will. Um, it has the Magna Carta uh, inscription on, uh, on its, um, on its uh, band. Uh, nice resin. Again, it has a similar to my fan move. It has a very nice uh, resin swirl effect. And one of the reasons why I got this pen very functional, uh, very nice uh, clip, and uh, the uh, well, the the nibs they come with their own nibs. Um, I forget if they're house made, but this one has a Leonardo Bach nib, as you will, uh, as some of you may know. Leonardo first came out when it first came out uh, with their pens had was using the Bach nibs. They got a lot of criticism. They then switched over to Joe. So I switched all my Leonardo's nibs into Joe's, and but I kept all the uh, Leonardo uh, Bach nibs. And what I did is I fine-tuned them, um, 
and you know what if you spend a little time on these nibs they can be really soft and nice and chunky and you know what i've used them on other pens and this one inherited a stub uh, leonardo bach stub uh, nib so there you go like magna carta the only criticism i would have about this pen is that it, it does have a tendency to dry um, which means that the somehow there's air that's getting into the uh, into that barrel and I suspect it's coming from uh, this joint here where the clip um, it's the only place I can think of unless the the screwing mechanism allows air to get into it because the rest is a, just a solid uh, a solid resin but unfortunately uh, if you don't use it on a regular basis and leave it standing somewhere with ink you'll find that it's gonna it's gonna take some time to start it's good it's got a lot of hard starts you got to get it going before it uh, before before it can be used that that would be my uh, only criticism really of this pen very well priced by the way very i think hundred uh, less than a hundred dollars maybe i believe this thing was going for like seventy dollars canadian okay next on my list is this pen bbs 469 double barrel pen first of all take a look at the resin unique pen bs really had some nice resins not as nice obviously as the leonardo's that have come out since but um, for a chinese pen that goes for like 14 15 bucks uh, i think there's a lot of value in here and as you can see it's a double barrel pen um, i usually use it with a blue and either a purple or red uh, orange that sort of combination and you can put you can actually put it use it as a roller ball and a fountain pen uh, i mean i don't like roller balls i'm a fountain pen guy so i've got fountain pens on both sides but there you have it uh, again uh, eyedropper and you can drop in and he, despite it looks small but there's quite a bit of ink that gets in there and it can last you quite a bit of time very nice seal you can leave it there for many 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 weeks uh, even months and you'll see there's no hard start it'll start just as if you had just uh, inked it next on my list is this fine international golden age brass uh, look at that isn't that exquisite very very nice hefty because of the brass um, and solid you've got the brass finishing uh, good size pen i mean you can fit i have a lot of ink in there uh, you fill that barrel up and you're good for quite a quite a bit of uh, months and months of writing and the wonderful thing about this is because this is so well insulated there's no air that gets in there you can shut this baby down for months pick it up and it will write just as beautifully as if you had just finished inking it it's got these little uh, these little points here that will allow it so that it doesn't roll off your desk as well very nice got good weight to it very nice pen very nice eyedropper in my in my collection one of my favorite next on my list is this um, ranga model 8 torpedo red um, again we will have the occasion uh, of uh, reviewing ranga pens you can see the ranga is inscribed not the most you know it, this is the shorter clips because they have longer clips and and shorter clips not the nicest clip in the world but you know functional uh, the ebonite is very nice uh, i enjoy ebonite pens talk about a good eyedropper this is as good as they come very very well well sealed once you shut this baby down like the golden age uh, nothing's going to disturb its uh, its wetness so that's one of the reasons why i enjoy the and i have maybe 10 pens in my ranga collection uh, very nice sized classic torpedo shaped this one has a goulet uh, joe 1.5 stub in it as you can see so i enjoy this pen this is definitely one of my go-to pens i read ink it all the time use it for my correcting and uh, you know when i need to highlight um, things in on on pdfs in red this is the pen of my one of the one of the red pens of choice speaking of red pens um, now we're in my top three and my third on my list if you will is this pen now you might say well, vincent what what's so unique about it well first of all this pen 
is a uh, what used to be called Moon Man, and I think they call themselves now uh, Mojon or something like that. But the time I purchased it, it was a Moon Man, and it was the Moon Man C1. Again, you first of all, you can fill that barrel with quite a bit of ink, okay, as you can see. And once you fill it, there's no, there's it doesn't escape. There's no escaping of ink. There's no messes. The seal on this pen is just, 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 just very, very effective. And um, the pen seals, and once you shut that baby down again, like the two previous pens we just reviewed, the, 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 the nib stays wet. Two months later, and it writes just beautifully with no hard starts. It's got a nice uh, resin tip here. Um, this one has a, a box stub, uh, an early Bach uh, version nib. Uh, and again, when it comes to uh, highlighting or correcting with red ink or purple ink, um, this is uh, one of my favorites. So it's, this is a go-to. It's just because you can use it all the time. Put it in your, in your, in your bag, take it out. It doesn't leak. It's just very functional. That's why it made my number three list. Mm -hmm. Number two on my list, and here again, it may not be the most, most um, you know, classical eyedropper, but I consider it as an eyedropper, and I can't. I've just uh, posted a review of this uh, Stipula Etruria Rainbow Prisma. Take a look at that resin. It's just, it, you know, it had to make my list. Yes, it does have a drawing system and has kind of a piston filler there, and some would argue it's not a true eyedropper. But again, there is it, the ink is in the barrel. It's got to be properly sealed. It doesn't have its own separate converter or cartridge. So in my, in my uh, estimation, you can't consider it as an eyedropper. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's very, and you know what? I rarely use the, the piston to, to fill it up. I open it up and I just fill it with, with my uh, syringe. So there you go. It's my, my version of the eyedropper and one of my favorite pens. There's the stipula nib that I talked about and that I rave about. You should all get these nibs, especially the, these are smaller stubs. So they're finer stubs. They just, just exquisite on paper. Just the perfect size nib, in my opinion. There you go. That's my stipula. And this brings me to my last and my number one high dropper, uh, or eye dropper award goes to this Opus 88 demonstrator. Here again, yes, there's a drawing system. It's not even a drawing system. And this one, I think does qualify as a as a true eyedropper but take a look at the design of this pen first of all great size talk about a large pen that i enjoy this is definitely one i enjoy beautiful beautiful design clip right um nice finial the the resin the transparent demonstrator resin is just just very exquisite in my opinion and opens up nicely um, the 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 size. Look at the size of this pen. Isn't that nice? Um, right now it's got a, a 1.5 stub. And the uniqueness about this nib is, as you can see, the ink here. There is a valve system that you can turn the top part here. Is just screw it in, and that will shut. For all intents and purposes, will shut the valve there. So when the ink, the ink will not go into the into the nib mechanism, okay, at all, at all, at all, at all. So it it, it keep the ink from just coagulating in that uh, nib nib mechanism. Then when you need to use it, and it also avoids any uh, any leakages, you just unscrew it, if you will, okay. It opens up the valve at the top here, and the ink then can flow into the nib mechanism, and uh, you've got a fine writing instrument. So to me because of all the its design its look this unique valve system uh, i think it's my number one eyedropper award goes to the opus 88 there you have it so if you take a look at all my choices and all my nominees here they are doesn't don't they look like a fine fine bunch of pens here these are all my nominees, with my winner being the Opus. I hope you enjoyed this one. Please stay tuned for my next uh, next video, where we'll be looking at the next category. 
and uh, subscribe if you have any comments, any suggestions. If you disagree with my uh, categorization of some of these pens as eyedroppers, please let me know. I want to see how many of you, uh, how many of you, vehemently disagree with that with that um, categorization in any event we've had, we're having a lot of fun and that's what's important enjoy your pens thank you very much and good night <laughs>